The Dodgers and Brewers getting set for first pitch at Camelback Ranch, and we are joined right now by a man that I coined the secret weapon a year ago. That's all out the window now because he is in high demand by multiple media outlets, and it's very hard to get a good-looking guy out of Central Michigan that plays baseball the way Zach McKinstry does on this pregame show, but we finally did it in 2021. Zach, I appreciate you not forgetting the little people. Oh, come on, David. <laughs> yeah, little guy. <laughs> oh, man. What's it been like for you, Zach? It feels like now people are definitely noticing how good of a player you are. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's It's been fun. It's been, uh, you know, lots of questions, lots of phone calls and all that stuff. So it's been it's been a good spring training. It's been a lot of fun getting the experience with the media and getting to know people and uh, just answer questions and people get to learn who I am. It's, it's really fun. Is it different, Zach? Because in the minor leagues, nobody really paid attention to you. It, was, it seemed like other guys were getting more attention. And now you've been able to show that you have substance to your game. Uh, what's it been like now to get attention after going so long without having so much public attention? Uh, I don't really pay attention that much to it, but uh I mean, it's, it's been fun, uh, guys. I just try to come out and do the same thing every day and just compete and play hard and just do my job. So uh, when you make it that easy, it's, it's easy to not really worry about that. And it's fun to get to know the media and have them uh, know who you are. But at the same time, it's fun to be like the quiet guy and nobody really knows who you are. So it's, uh, I get both spectrums now, so it's uh, pretty cool. What's it been like this spring training for you? Obviously, a lot different than a year ago. The Dodgers are definitely looking for opportunities for players like you. How, does it feel different that the opportunity is presenting itself more than in years past? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, it, yeah, I mean, it's been really cool. Like, the guys know my name uh, <laughs> from spring training last year and also in summer camp, uh, just being around those guys. Uh, you know, when you come in, they actually know who you are and they can, they have like a face to a name now. And I got to go on a lot of trips last year. So they got to know who I was, uh, you know, get up on the bus and uh, you get to tell them who you are and they get to like, you know, they get to know who you are a little bit more when you're around them. So that was really cool. And just, uh, yeah, the past year and a half has been uh, a lot of fun getting to know these guys and uh, getting to be in the clubhouse with them and watch how they go about their business. Hey, Zach, which teammate has forgotten your name the most? <laughs> uh, Is it Barnes? I was going to say Barnes, but <laughs> we're in AAA together. So <laughs> uh, probably Barnes. No, I'm just kidding. No, uh, they're, all, they're all pretty good with my name. So they're, they're uh, really good guys. I know one guy that knows your name. That's Max Muncy. He told us at the start of spring that you guys have been working out since January. How did that come together? Uh, just kind of came out here in, uh, January 15th and, uh, with Zach, I was living with Zach Rex and, um, just came out here to Camelback and started hitting outside and, uh, got to, you know, just enjoy the weather and not have to be back in Fort Wayne where it's cold and windy and you're doing baseball stuff inside. And it was just, you know, cloudy every day and it's kind of cold, but, um, yeah, it's, it was good, and I uh, got to know Muncie a little bit better and uh, just see how he works and goes about his business in the cage. And um, he really wanted to get uh, his swing back together after last year and uh, just working hard with him and uh, watching him work out in the weight room was a lot of fun, too. Zach, when you guys work out like that together in January, is it all about the swing or does Muncie talk to you about the approach? Because he is known for having great plate discipline. Uh, it was more about the swing at that time, just because, I mean, you're not really playing games, so the approach doesn't come up much. But, um, I mean, yeah, that's something that I look to pick his mind on. And uh, just going forward, he's, he has great eye, like just battles and finds a way to get on first base any way possible. And I kind of need to work on that. So uh, that, that's definitely a conversation to have in the future. Are you an aggressive hitter? You don't really look for, for the walks. You're looking to get on base with the hits. Um, I would say, I mean, I've been both, uh, I can, I, I go back and forth. Uh, I know I can put a bat on the ball, um, just about any time I want. So, 
uh, I, I try to do so. <laughs> yeah. And you've done that all spring training, man. Yeah. You can, I think everybody started to realize that. Yes. You can't put the bat to the ball. That's uh, that's for sure. It's been fun to watch you play this spring. Zach McKinstry is our guest. And the one thing that we, we have gotten to know about Zach McKinstry is the versatility. Uh, you've been playing a lot of different positions, including center field, What's it been like for you this spring to be able to have the opportunity to play these different positions? Yeah, I mean, it's awesome. Uh, getting to go out and play in center field, uh, I think three times now. Uh, when I've only played, played it in the minor leagues, what, twice or two or three times. Um, so playing that as much as possible, uh, getting reads out there is a lot of fun. I've, you know, I made a bad play the first night that I was out there. I jumped for a ball too early. Uh, and then just, you know, looking at my feet work and just trying to work on that, getting on, uh, getting good reads and uh, almost came up with a diving catch yesterday, uh, missed it by, by a foot. But, you know, I'll learn from all that and uh, put it in my arsenal and uh, learning my range, um, just all that kind of stuff. Uh, getting to see the ball fly off the bat and um, just, you know, learning every day, uh, taking that for uh, not taking it for granted and uh, just taking it in the arsenal. What's the biggest difference between playing center field and the corner outfield spots? Um, the ball tails more uh, in the, in the uh, corners, um, but center field, there's a lot more range that's involved and uh, you're going to get the ball. Um, the ball's hit harder to center field, I believe, because you're at, in the center of the field um, and in the middle of the field where the ball's mostly hit harder in the, in the center of the field. So. Um, yeah, just in that first step is so crucial when you're playing center field that um, it, you have to be really quick and go after that ball as fast as you can. Hey, good news, McKinstry. Cody Bellinger is back today, so you may not have to play a lot of center field moving <laughs> forward. I hear that. He's a, he's a gold glover for a reason. He does a great job out there and uh, look forward to learning maybe some stuff from him and uh, taking, that, taking that with me. Zach, since you play the infield and the outfield, yeah. On those backfield drills, where have you spent the most time and have you been able to gravitate towards one veteran more than another during those drills? Um, I take a lot of ground balls. Uh, I mean, it's usually Gavin and I at second base. Um, I mean, we're we're always, you know, hanging out and I like to be around Gavin. He's a great, has a great attitude uh, coming into camp this year and he's just a great guy to be around and a smart, smart He's younger than me, which is crazy. Like we've come up together the whole time. Like he feels like a brother. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, Gavin and I just kind of do our thing over there and get after it. Even though he's uh, younger than you, is it still older brother, younger brother? Or do you feel like he may have some life wisdom? What's the dynamics between you two guys that have been teammates and have come up together? Uh, it's, I feel like we're just like right there, like, He's really, he, he has some things to talk to me about and I have some things to tell him about. And uh, it's just, you know, we just kind of bounce off of each other and try to feed off each other's energy. Uh, hitting eight and nine yesterday was a lot of fun with him. And uh, just, you know, uh, reminiscing of like the minor league stuff and getting to play with the guy that you've played with for four years now and in the big league game and competing against big league pitchers is a lot of fun. Is there a bond between you guys because you got, you came up together and, you both are trying to solidify your spot on this team for the first time. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, we saw it in Tulsa and when we played, I think it was like a hundred games in a row at second and base and shortstop. You just kind of build those bonds and uh, you're just, you know, you just kind of become closer with one another and you don't even have to talk to each other. You just know what you're doing at all times on the field and you just kind of click. All right, before I let you go, speaking of that middle infield dynamic, there have been certain games this spring where you've played second base and Corey Seager's played short. Has uh, Seager helped you at all, or uh, does he just give you the, uh, you know, the blank stare? <laughs> uh, the blank stare most of the time, but, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, he, he's really smart when he's out there. He makes every play, and, uh, I mean, he makes you look good as a second baseman. So, um, yeah, I mean, Seager is a great player. He was the MVP for a reason. Um, you know, he's he's out there. He's he never changes his emotion, even if somebody makes an error. And you know, he'll he'll tap you on the back and say, "Hey, you got it next time. Don't worry about it, man." And uh, yeah, I mean, he's just so poised in the way that he goes about it, and it's it's awesome to be around. 
How about watching him swing the bat here in the last six or seven <laughs> games to see it up close? What do you feel about that? Yeah, he's just a great hitter. I mean, like I said before, he's just the MVP for a reason. He just goes about it a different way, and um, he I mean, he gets pitches, and he hits them hard. Uh, the, the, it seemed like yesterday the pitcher was so worried about Mookie on first base that he just forgot who was hitting, and, and it's the way that it trickles down. I mean, you can't just forget about uh, the MVP and of the, the World Series in that situation. And he just drove that ball like 375 feet the other way. It was pretty impressive. It's been fun to watch Seager hit, but it's been fun to watch you play and really introduce yourself to Dodger fans, Zach. And continued success, continued health, and I uh, really appreciate the time. And uh, I know you're a blue-collar type of player, so – I won't uh, put the Hollywood label on you. No, yeah. <laughs> never, <laughs> never. Yeah. You'll never have that label, yeah. McKinstry. No. no. <laughs> Thanks. There you go. Zach McKinstry, 33rd round pick out of Central Michigan on the cusp of making the Dodgers opening day roster. When we continue here on the Morongo Casino Dodgers on Deck Show, we'll get you the latest Dodger injury report. Plus, we will also check in with Rick Monday and Tim Neverett one final time before first pitch between the Dodgers and Brewers on Kershaw Day right here on AM570 LA Sports and the Dodgers Radio Network. <laughs> 